Hey y'all, Uncle Jimmy here. When you speak for yourself, you're forced to think for yourself. And when you think for yourself, the sports world looks different. In order to enjoy this podcast and this show, you need to have the courage to look at the world from alternative points of view and not be offended when you disagree. Speak for Yourself isn't your Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram feed. SFY tells you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. So, welcome aboard, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. We start with the Raiders. Raiders. Antonio Brown reportedly confronted general manager Mike Mayock at practice on Wednesday after he was upset with the team for fining him for missing practice. ESPN's Josina Anderson says that during the, or- the confrontation, A.B. unleashed a barrage of curse words and called Mayock a cracker. Mm. Anderson also wow. reports that with the team captain <clears throat> standing with him, A.B. made an emotional apology at a team meeting today. And now Coach John Gruden says despite all this chaos, Antonio Brown will play on Monday night against the Broncos. I'll just say Antonio's back today. We're really uh, excited about that, ready to move on. He's uh, had a lot of, uh, obviously, time to think about things, and we're happy to have him back. And uh, I know Raider Nation is excited about that, too. All right? All right, guys. Thank you very much. Monday night? Uh, That's the plan. That's the plan. Yes. Marcellus, you ready? I'm throwing this hot potato right in your lap. Are the Raiders making a mistake playing A.B. Monday night? Mm. Are they making a mistake? They're not making a mistake because I think the restrictions are coming with that opportunity. And we've all heard of zero tolerance, uh, but this is going to be negative one tolerance. This is going to be a guy, uh, when you have the visualization of something that is booby-trapped, as soon as you cross this line, it's over, done. And I think that it's no longer the fine print of what they're going to do in terms of discipline and interaction. It's the bold print. Antonio Brown, this is it, big dog. I hate to tell you, but that six-round mentality that you had that was a humble kid, hungry, and climbed all the way to this greatness, we are returning you exactly to that place. None of this veteran presence, none of these vet rules, none of this great existence that your game has actually afforded you. You are the 53rd man in terms of discipline, in terms of how we get down. If you even fall asleep in the meeting, which we know we all can get away with when you're balling, it's a wrap, bro. And if they have come with that level of restriction, put them out there. I want to see it. Yeah, they're making a mistake. Why, why would they come with that level of restriction? They haven't come with it yet. If you have two kids, one is, say, he's 13 years old and the other one is five, you tell your 13-year-old, hey, go clean your room. He look at you and say, nah, you go clean it. What you think the five-year-old going to do when he get older? Mm. He going to tell you the same. You're setting the precedent to where guys on the team know, if I start balling, I got plenty of rope. I'm going to get plenty of leeway to kind of do whatever I want to do. And I guarantee Gruden and Mayock aren't on the same page with this because he embarrassed Mike Mayock. He straight up embarrassed him in front of the whole team, in front of whomever was out there. And Gruden is saying, I need him to help us win games. Mm. I hope he looks and he reflects and says, (laughs) okay, let let me start living in reality and start to realize I was a six-round pick. I was a late-round draft pick. I did have to earn my way onto the team and he humbles himself and oh. says, okay, I'm going to be a part of this team. Because right now, he's a part of the team, but he feels like I am the team. Well, let me push back just quickly. You're not wrong, except you're never going to give up on your kid. And in and, and, and this investment, where you're talking about, and I'm going to let you go with it, you just can't give up mm-hmm. on it before you even got there. Mm-hmm. Like, we haven't even played a game yet with this dude. We've been right. through a lot, so maybe that's it. No, I think you, you, you hit it, and that's a great setup. I said it yesterday, I'll say it again today. It is an indictment on Mayock, whether he wants to admit it or not, through uh-huh. the, the hold on, hold on. I'm through sorry. the embarrassment or anything else, and it's an indictment to to John Gruden because they brought him in. If he did not play, based upon any circumstances outside of breaking the law, if he did not play, they have to be on the hot seat for bringing him in. That's for one. For two, the, the only mistake here is what I also said was the young man has had the opportunity to skate by in situations where he's needed to get help. They're putting a Band-Aid over a wound that needs stitches because it's for the sake of trying to win. Mm. So now the, the winning aspect of it is worth more than actually trying to help correct why the 100%. behavior is what it That's is. That's what it is. It's so, about wins so and in the end, So yeah. in the end... Yeah. In the end, the whole point of all of this is, yes, it's the best decision because it's truly, in a way, your only decision. 
Y'all done took the words right out of my mouth. I don't think this is a mistake. I think the only thing that can justify the acquisition of Antonio Brown is 120 yards, a couple of touchdowns, mm -hmm. and that performance on Monday night. That's the only way that Gruden and Mayock can save themselves from a ridiculously stupid decision. With that being have... said, though, hmm. what do you think that defensive <clears throat> coordinator is doing now? They know they got to feature him. They know they got to make this look right. They can implode the game just by trying to force him the ball. Or he can implode the game because if Derek Carr's not getting him that ball, it's going to be a problem. Think... Well, TK, oh. just remember, the guy has led the, the league in targets throughout <laughs> his career. Right. So that That's won't normal. be anything new. That's normal. A.B. has been the squeaky wheel ever since he emerged as a star and, and the Pittsburgh Steelers fed him the ball, the Oakland Raiders are going to feed him the ball. He's the squeaky wheel. He, he has, a, he's manipulated their whole game plan because it will be the A.B. show Monday night to justify all this that they put up with. He's put uh, John Gruden and Mike Mayock in the same foxhole with him. I don't think, I really don't think Mayock and Gruden are on separate pages on this. Right. I don't think that uh, Mayock is, is really all that concerned about A.B. and the name calling. Again, in private, they know exactly what A.B. is, and they're not fooling themselves. We need this dude on Sundays. The rest of the week, we just going to hold our nose and tolerate it. Yeah, but, and, and also, just to add to that, when you're looking at the situation with, with A.B., you're, you're talking about Mayock and, and, and Gruden want to have that success. They want A.B. to have that success. They may come out on top because Mayock feels as though, you know what, I took a stand when I needed to take a stand. It was before the season got started. He came back. He had a repent a repentful moment. And, and you know moment. what? We're going right, to... Okay. Hey, but it's a possibility you, to build from Would you from not it. have that repentful moment when you have... Mm. $30 million, million dollars dollars on, on the line. Of course, so I would, Regardless too. of what the we reasoning... We would. Regardless of what the reasoning is, it could actually turn out but to be a just, positive on, for man, this let's group. Let's just call it what it is. You are setting a bad precedent for everybody on the team. I played through stuff like this. You guys in a, too. The leaders on the team are going <laughs> to... They want A.B. to play because they know he can help them. But as soon as something happens, it's... I told you. I well, told you. He's going to have to make amends you, with the team. It's a team. I don't care who you are. You can have the best player in the league, the best player in the league. If everybody else isn't doing their job, but you you're know, going you to know, lose. We're more, we're more, we're more open to, to re, you know, letting you come reintroducing somebody into our community. After how many times? But here's the thing about precedent, and let's, let's be careful here, because there are rules in place for all to make sure that you stay in alignment based on discipline. But then there are also, on every team we've been on, exceptions that prove the rule. Mm. And guess what? Yeah. This is the time to take that exception of to prove is. that we do have a culture to create, but we also got to respect that this is a guy that we're trying to reconcile. Every team has to reconcile two things. How do I help you individually become the best you can mm -hmm. while I also help this team become the best? Well, you again? forgot one. Mm -hmm. While I help myself. myself. <laughs> I help myself. Right. Let me that's, keep adding that. It's three. So that's the point. That's the trinity. I, I, that's I'm, what I'm going to say this, though. I, I, Marcellus, you introduced you think they have a zero tolerance. Negative one. Know, negative one. Negative <laughs> one. I don't buy it. You don't? No, I, I really don't. I, I think Mayock and Gruden and the Davis family, you got to remember... Uh, the yeah. Davis family yeah. hasn't been cash flush. Right. They've been one of the poor teams as they've settled some things within their family. Mm -hmm. And so th they're just not willing to sacrifice the money they have invested in A.B. And so I, I think they've all adopted, let's get him to Sunday. And I think the they probably even talked to their leaders on the team. We're just going to get this dude to Sunday and try to see. If it only lasts eight games, but we win two or three of them or four of them because of him, it's good enough. It's, and I think they're ready when he does go way too far, which, again, I think it, it could actually happen on the field Monday night. A.B. is unhinged and is capable of doing something during the game son Monday that embarrasses the Raiders. Well, what undermines your argument is if you're not liquid like they are, uh, 
you're fully motivated to actually suspend him so you can get your 30 million back so you can say we're still going to get the buzz of him we're going to create a culture and then transplant that to vegas and then we're going to see the money once we land all right in vegas. hold on for one That's second right? Levar. Yep. we just yep. got uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. a video of antonio brown addressing the media i want to play this and then yep. we'll react to it i'm excited to be out here today uh i'm gonna apologize to my teammates uh organization Enough talk, man. I'm excited to be out here with my teammates and uh, grateful for all the fans. And uh, I'm excited to uh, be a part of the Raiders and see you guys soon. He going through something, man. You say what you want. Beyond. That dude I is going through something, man. He's a good dude. Yeah. But when you've been able to do whatever you've wanted to do in this profession and practice in games, you think, I can do it all the time. And when you start to reach 30, 31, 32, they become less tolerable. That's yeah. just what it is. Yeah. Let, let's address this, because this is a popular mm. conversation going on right now. A.B. called Mike Mayock a racial slur. Mm -hmm. And some people are up in arms, like, how dare they? How could they allow him to play? And if it was reversed, what would be the result? Oh, that'd be horrible. I, uh, well, well, hold on. Let, let's enter some facts into this. Yeah. Riley Cooper didn't call a teammate or a coach that, but he was mm. captured on tape. Indeed. Yes, he, he was. He was fined. He played, he got a new contract for quite a bit of money. So I do think there's some false equivalence. These issues are very complicated and nuanced. I, I don't think, again, using Riley Cooper as the example, the Eagles wide receiver that was called on videotape at a concert, tossing the N-word around and threatening people, if you guys remember that a yeah, few years oh, ago. Absolutely. There was a team meeting. Yeah. Michael Vick was part of the leadership group that talked people into... Uh, reconciling with Riley Cooper, I don't think this is any difference uh, there in that regard. So, having introduced those facts, yeah. is there some hypocrisy here? Is there? What should the Raiders and Mike Mayock feel about that that aspect of it? Um, I think everyone up here has been called outside their name an ad hominem attack, uh, racial slur. Uh, I certainly have. I, I will say this. And, and then all of us being in the dynamic of a team atmosphere and understanding how that can land. You won't be dismissed in my eyes. So, A.B., you could still be on this roster, but you certainly, in terms of respect, have been demoted. And that means that how I look at you now, we are at a different distance because I understand when you're pushed, that's where you go. Understanding that you still have a huge benefit to us on this roster in terms of construction. But you know how people always say the straw that broke the camel's back? Mm. You got to think about how many straws are already on oh, this back. A whole lot of straws. Because it ain't just one straw that breaks the back. Indeed. It's all the other straws. So guess Indeed. what? I'm not going to let this one be the one. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You have now put yourself in a position that, like I said before, this is a negative one tolerance. Mm. Next thing you do, it's coming for you, A.B., and it's your doing. And that's how a locker room gets divided. And you know, it's offense here, defense here. The black guys here, the white guys here. On the teams that really get along, it's a mixture of everything. Mm -hmm. Man, if things start going bad, the white guys on the team, are they're going to talk amongst themselves and say, this is what he thinks about us when he gets mad. And they'll have that conversation amongst well, they're themselves. They're already having that conversation. Right, right. now, yeah, on the already, phone with whoever. He already showed himself. And so, yeah. be, right. if that happened on the field with the white player saying that to a black GM... He'd been getting whooped. Right he on, got like, beat up and so... On site. Unfairly. You know why? Very much but so. He was, no, no, he he, I him. know if it would happen in my locker room, a mature mind would have said, wait a minute now, we are not going to act like A.B. is speaking for all black players. So guess what? Don't you try to say it's y'all. It's yeah. A.B. Right. Yep. So right? So that, that shouldn't good. divide us. That sounds good. But no, good. that's and what you're going to hear. But when you're removed, from the you're removed from the locker room, in the locker room, there's a lot of dudes from the deep south that ain't going for that. There's, right. a, there's a lot of dudes from Texas that ain't going for that. That's real. There are a lot of dudes that, based upon principle, of that being and said, the way they grew I don't up. care who you saying it to, yeah. right? So the reality of it is, is that there's probably the same type of guy that's somewhere from, you know, I don't want to make it a racial thing, but maybe it's a Nebraska, right? Maybe it's a Wisconsin, right? They're not going for that. So it's going to cause a division for certain. I don't think there's a level of hypocrisy here. And the reason being is, is that he's going to get fined, just like Riley Cooper did. Mm -hmm. the, the reality of it is, is that A.B. is a better ball player and a bigger star and a bigger brand than Riley was. He disappeared. 
it will be based upon how that man performs and how much he does to redeem himself that dictates if that statement alone comes back to so haunt So why him. should it just be perform? It should be in his actions and how he interacts with that race and right. like perform, I, 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 like him performing should have nothing to do with what he said. But mm. it's it's because it's sports, right? Well, it's because I, it's no, sports, no, no, and but, that's. But, but I also think Marcellus has landed on a point that is really profound here: the level of respect for Antonio Brown as a non-football player. Mm has gone down. Hmm. I'm not even sure if it was really ever that high, but it's gone down even further. And so happiness is based on expectations. And that's why, I get, and again, it took me a long time or a while to get there. When I was 21, 22, 23, I didn't have this point of view, but I certainly have it now. When people come at me with that level of ignorance, yes. I, 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 I'm like, wow, you're yeah. that ignorant. Mm -hmm. You are that beneath me, and I, and I hate to put myself above anybody else. I hope else, I can get there soon. But, but, but literally, <laughs> but TJ, it, it really, it's about... It's empowering. ...how you feel about yeah. yourself. Self. Yes. And then all of a sudden, yes. you're like, this is how you think? This is how you... Like, whoa. I almost damn near feel sorry for you. And so I can guarantee you, Mike Mayock at his age, he's got a level of confidence about himself. AB's not defining him right. in any way possible. And so he's, like, looking at AB, and I think... Derek Carr, the white dudes in that locker room, and a lot of the black dudes are looking at that locker room like, this is really a child. He's yeah. a child. This yeah. is and that's, <laughs> and that's, yes. and that's, that's, that's the profound point of why this, this organization and this group could actually turn this into a positive. They yeah. may embrace him for that. For the fact that it is remedial what he is doing. It is juvenile. They better be winning and he better it's be juvenile balling. juvenile what he's doing. Well, yeah, it, it does come to performance, but it, they could rally around him well, based upon what look, you guys look, are look, saying. Look, look, we're like talking about what I'm talking about is there's an obstacle course in the game itself on the field and off the field that there, this maze has to be figured out. It's intricate. There's so many different ways. And when you hit that wall in front of you on the field, how do you respond? Mm -hmm. You just hit a wall in interaction off the field. Mm -hmm. This is how you respond? You are now deemed lesser than. Label. So when you talk about a blue blood franchise with a brand that is worldwide, you just devalued oh. your worth to us. Globally. The Cowboys always say that star is going to follow you. Yeah. Oh, that Raiders ain't going to follow you the same. And then that's on you, bro. Hey, guys. This is Jason Whitlock from Speak for Yourself. Are you ready for what's ahead? You can't always predict the future, but you can game plan for it. Generations of families and businesses have harnessed the power of Pacific to help them reach their unique goals. Whether you need to save enough money to meet your needs, ensure your family is protected, or make sure you don't run out of money, Pacific Life has a variety of financial solutions that can help. Pacific Life counts more than half of the 100 largest U.S. companies as its clients and has been named one of the 2019 world's most ethical companies by the Ethisphere Institute. Protecting what matters most to people for 150 years and counting? That's the power of Pacific. Ask a financial professional about how Pacific Life can help you game plan for the future or visit PacificLife.com. Joined once again by TJ Huspenzada and LeVar Arrington. All right, let's go to Chicago. There's a popular meme over social media of a guy walking hand in hand with his girlfriend while leering at an attractive woman mm. walking past. Mm. I'm sure you've seen it. A Spanish <laughs> photographer staged that photo. Last night, in the aftermath of Green Bay's 10-3 <laughs> victory over the Chicago Bears in the NFL season <laughs> opener, Packers <laughs> quarterback Aaron Rodgers reenacted the photo organically. Rodgers has a brand-new girlfriend and head coach Matt LaFleur. Last night was their first night out on the town as a committed couple. Mm. It was a big night. Rodgers' last relationship with Super Bowl-winning coach Mike McCarthy ended in messy fashion. McCarthy couldn't do anything right in Rodgers' mind. The quarterback nitpicked everything. He complained about McCarthy's weight, hairstyle, <laughs> choice of clothes, pregame meals, play calls. Things allegedly got so bad that McCarthy started skipping team meetings and scheduling in-office massages. <laughs> McCarthy felt useless and unappreciated. Mm. Rodgers just wasn't into him. 
So the Packers fired McCarthy and hired a hot young coach <laughs> like the one the Los Angeles Rams used to seduce their team. Ow. LaFleur Ow. is a classic <laughs> statuesque brunette. Mm. He's never been in a serious relationship. Oh, Since starting his coaching career in 2003, LaFleur has worked for 11 different teams at the collegiate and pro level. Damn. He's a flirt, mm. always looking to upgrade. Mm. Maybe that's why Rodgers is so reluctant to commit. Mm. Maybe that's why Rodgers and LaFleur butted heads throughout the offseason over Rodgers' ability to audible plays at the line of scrimmage. And maybe that's why, after the game, Rodgers was captured leering suggestively at Packers defensive coordinator Mike Pettin. Hey. Take a listen to what Rodgers said post-game. That defense is going to give a lot of teams struggles. They're a very talented team. You know, we, you know, I had a couple real bad throws. We're off, you know, out of sync at times, but um, we got a defense. We kept saying in the huddle, like, hey, let's pick our defense up. Let's just get one drive together. And we backed up. We finally put together a drive, got a field goal out of it. But it didn't matter. I mean, those guys, Mike Pettin and his staff, unbelievable job. It's fun to watch. I mean, that was an incredible performance. We'll get better. You know, it's a long season. That's a great defense, and we got to get a lot better on offense. But I'll say it again, we got a defense. Pettin and the Packers defense won a game for Aaron Rodgers. It's been a long time since somebody besides Aaron Rodgers won an important game for Green Bay. At age 52, Pettin is the kind of mature, experienced NFL coach a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers could, be, could see himself settling down with. Aaron's clock is ticking. Mm. He needs to win a second Super Bowl to take his place alongside the NFL's most celebrated quarterbacks. He needs a second Super Bowl to surpass Brett Favre's Green Bay legacy. Right now, Rodgers is behind Bart Starr and Favre, let alone competing against Pey the Peyton Mannings and John Elways in the rest of the football world. Rodgers seemed giddy last night. He believes Petten and Green Bay's defense have relieved the pressure of him having to win every game with a Superman offensive <laughs> performance. Rodgers also believes Petten is a viable plan B if things don't work out in Rodgers' new relationship with Matt LaFleur. I like the way Rodgers is thinking and operating. Early in a new relationship, you always keep your side piece close, mm. happy, and feeling very valuable. Mm. Rodgers needs more than more proof that LaFleur is the one. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Speaking boy, of those Whitlogs don't it's play, boy. The thing is classic. Keep them close, huh? <laughs> keep them close. Right. And happy. Uh, should Aaron Rodgers keep the bills paid? The whole nine. Should Aaron Rodgers be encouraged? <laughs> By last night's win. Yeah, yeah but Miss Dow, you saw Oh, oh, my bad. Hey. <laughs> Wrong number. <laughs> oh, you're too quick. Um, it's no, in, it's he, in now. It's in. It's in. It's it's in. <laughs> I owed it it's in. It's all good. He's not happy, y'all. We all been there before. Um, it, it, there's so many layers to a team's win and a team's success that we have to really elaborate on. One, if you win the game, you got to smile. But that doesn't mean you're feeling good on the inside. I've been in games before we won, and I'm like, I ain't do a damn thing. So I'm internally frustrated, but, yeah, I'm going to smile through this experience because I got next week. They have next week, but let's talk about what happened last night. Mm -hmm. Whew. How many delayed games did we see? Five sacks, things mm -hmm. I was predicting yesterday, talking about the offensive line. Four sacks on third down. You know what the problem is? Last year, the money down, he was third in the league getting sacked 25 times on third down. People don't think much of that statistic, but I'm going to tell you why that's a problem. Because that's where you make your money, on third downs to move the chains for what? That defense to rest. Mm -hmm. This is Aaron Rodgers last night on third down. Three for six, 16 yards, four sacks on third down, 56 passer rating. Is that sustainable? Is that good? Is that going to work? This offense, new scheme, new coach, 10 points. This is the same team you beat last year, last second comeback. So the team won, and they should feel good about that, but there's a lot of internal frustration, and it's starting with Aaron Rodgers. The reason you're encouraged is because you're 1-0 and and not 0-1. It's hard to win games in the NFL, mm -hmm. and for the first time in a long time, the defense won a game for him. And he's looking at it from his perspective like, there's no way I can play this bad as an offense and me as an uh, individual again. There, there's just – I'm not playing. And mm. let's take into account, they were going against Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears defense is in real. In Chicago. It's mm -hmm. legit. In yeah, Chicago. Yeah, they, that that yeah. defense is not – that's not easy. Your first game, you didn't play in the preseason, new head coach. That's not easy to go against that Bears defense. And, and so, 
he's looking at it like, wow, we want to know. We played like this as an offense. I'm very encouraged because I'm not playing like this again. He's certainly encouraged, but I thought it was interesting when you saw the the, uh, the video where he went and hit Pat and <laughs> he was pointing at LaFleur like, that should be you! <laughs> that should be you! <laughs> he didn't hit he didn't hit LaFleur, right? No. He didn't hug LaFleur like, ah, oh, we got this, right? He, he's, pray, he's pushing Pat like, yeah, Patton! Yeah! Yeah! Hey, hey, LaFleur! That should be you! <laughs> that should be you! And, 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 and so when you have, He's encouraged because he's Aaron Rodgers, and that's his team. Mm. And they went and they won that first game, and he has time to improve. And, and like you said, TJ, that is not an easy game to go play. That's not a tough hill to hoe. And you got to really, really take into consideration that coming out playing as poorly as they did on the offensive side of the ball, which you expect when you don't play um, that much in the preseason – that to be able to get out of there with a divisional win, a team that could possibly be in, outside of the, the Vikings could be a team that actually challenges for the division crown, you're definitely encouraged. I, I'm going to go back to my analogy in the essay. This is why I do think he's encouraged. He left that date last night having won, given every indication like, oh, this is going well. But uh, Mike Lef Matt LaFleur needs Aaron Rodgers a lot more than Aaron Rodgers after last night. Aaron Rodgers like, you see my plan B over here. Mm. Experienced guy that's been a head coach mm. before. Mm. Got this defense turned around. Mm. If you don't give up, if we have another offensive performance like this and you're not willing to give me more control of this offense, we're going to have a problem. It mm. looked like he – go back to the uh, – it was late in the fourth quarter. It was under two minutes ago. They had just stopped the Bears. The Bears got two, three timeouts. They run the ball, timeout. And it was a run-pass option, and Aaron Rodgers throws the ball. Like, run the ball, make him use another timeout. Because mm -hmm. he, he threw the ball behind the gotcha. receiver. I remember the play. And, and so that shows me LaFour is not really handcuffing him. Because in that situation, you don't even give a run-pass right. option. It's right. straight run. We don't even have the option to pass. Could there be – you mentioned option, and that's kind of like an operative word right here. Could it be that he's not trying to, to size up – Petten as as a possible uh, uh, companion for him, and that he actually in Green Bay is actually able to be uh, what is that poly poly what what's the word <laughs> polygamous? Uh, no, okay, there you go. That's that's another <laughs> way to put it. Poly Ooh, something. Poly but anyway, maybe he does. <laughs> he won't both of them. Maybe he don't have to decide in Green Bay. Maybe he's safe to make his own laws as it applies or, to him or, in Green Bay. Or like most relationships. You just stuck, and this is what it is. He's stuck. <laughs> They're going to have to get along. Need to, we got to keep these records c connected. Last year, they beat Chicago. Last year, they finished 6, 9, and 1. This year, they beat Chicago. Will y'all stop forecasting all these sunny days ahead with a new coach who, and his, his record has been in question, Tennessee Titans, 27 scoring offense last year. With the Rams, you ain't even call plays. 11 teams in, what, 14 years? There's a reason. What are y'all <laughs> Why are we forecasting so much greatness? And this right. Green Bay defense, you beat a team that most evaluators said was going to regress to the mean. Most people thought Chicago was not winning 12 games again this year. A lot of people expected Mitch Trubisky to be more, but not this team to be more. Mm. So let's just keep Man, this is the NFL. They together. held them to three points. I love you. This three points. This is the NF. Three points? I, I don't care it. how good you think the Bears. Three points? I love Bad. you. And winning a game when you only scored 10? Yeah. I just think he's got to be encouraged. How many games this? in Aaron Rodgers' career has he won a game when he scored 10 points. But how many times can Probably that happen? Probably less than How many, how many okay, times can okay. that realistically happen? I'm though? asking TJ, did I come to you? Yeah. When you had zero catches, or let's say no, you get two catches for 27 when, yards when you, and y'all won a game. When how you, you felt that night? When you said that, I was like, I know exactly where you're coming from. <laughs> are you I, encouraged? No, you're you happy you won, <laughs> but you... <laughs> are you encouraged? Hey, LeVar, that's one the tackle. Truth. Personally. One tackle, one assist. Personally. Y'all won the game. Are you we, encouraged? We lost so much in Washington, I would have been encouraged <laughs> if we won the game. And I I would have put my feelings personally aside <laughs> for my performance. Right. Just, right. He threw one touchdown me. and it wasn't even where he wanted to throw it. He said, <laughs> Jimmy, oh, oh, here you go. <laughs> it's time to celebrate. Football is finally back. And DraftKings, the leader in one-day fantasy football, has huge week one contests. New users who sign up today on DraftKings using code SPEAK will receive a free shot at the $1 million top prize. Nothing adds to the sweat 
of watching the game quite like having a shot at a $1 million payday. Get in on the season opener action, download the DraftKings app now, and use the code SPEAK for a limited time. Both new and existing users can get a deposit bonus up to $500. And new users, don't miss this extra special week one bonus. Enter my code SPEAK, S-P-E-A-K, to get a free shot at the $1 million with your first deposit. That's code SPEAK, only at DraftKings. Make it rain. TJ Husmanzada is back with us, making his Speak for Yourself debut. His former All-Pro linebacker and oh. Wiley teammate, Takeo Spike. That's my dog. Yeah. Darkness is in the you know man. What, Keo, I, call, I used to call you Baby Ray Lewis when you're in your playing you days. All right, let's baller. return to the NFL. Baller right here. Bears quarterback Mitchell Trubisky looked pretty bad last night, finishing with just 228 yards passing, no touchdowns, and threw an interception and a double coverage in the end zone late. Mm. Mm. Trubisky snuck into the Pro Bowl last year, and Chicago clearly thinks he's a franchise quarterback. But if you listen to the Packers, they would disagree. We wanted to make Mitch play quarterback. We knew they had a lot of weapons. We knew they were dangerous. We knew, we knew all of those things, but we knew if we could make Mitch play quarterback that we'll have a chance. Wow. That's about as honest what as I've ever heard. What else they thought he was going to play? how you really feel. Yeah, yeah, right? Should the Bears be concerned about Mitch Trubisky after last night? They should not be concerned. Let's just keep this in perspective. They threw that dude to the wolves, and this is unfortunate. A second-year player needs an opportunity to go out there and grow in confidence when the bullets aren't live and the wins and losses don't count, which is the preseason. So when you're in a new system, hey, man, you know what? You need to go out there and get some reps, you know, knock some of the rust off. When you're a second-year player, and I really, like, relate this to the NBA and the guys who are in the summer league. You ever see the second-year players in the summer league? Oh, they are all-stars. They're clowning all those top rookies and everyone who just gets new to it because the game hasn't slowed down to them just yet. They threw this guy to the wolves and robbed him of his opportunity to gain the confidence. So what we saw last night in his world was a glorified preseason game. He was just going out there trying to do the little things and thinking through it. As Steve Young even said post-game, this dude did a high school stare down and threw in the triple coverage of interception. <laughs> you know why he did that? Because he didn't come in with the full confidence and having himself battle tested. So for a guy in his second year to not throw one pass in the preseason, you robbed him of that opportunity and threw him to the wolves. Second year in this offense, third year in the league. Yeah. Now, should they be concerned? Absolutely they should be con concerned. But they could have helped him. It was a one possession game. The entire game. Yeah. They ran the ball 15 times. And he had three of those carries. So should they be concerned? Yeah. But helping one possession game, the entire game, you're at home and you run the ball 15 times and he has three of those carries as a quarterback. That's not good. That's the problem. It was the play calling. It was almost like we think from practice he can carry the load. Guarantee next week, hmm. week two, He'll throw the ball 27 times or run it 40, 35 to 40 times. Be they try, okay, you can win games for us. Oh, he can't do that. We're going to pull back, kind of like what Pete Carroll did with Russell Wilson a couple years ago. We think you can lead us with your arm. Oh, you've shown us we can't, that you can't. <clears throat> We're going to run the ball. If they would have run the ball, it probably is a different outcome. Play action, everything opens up. Mm. This is My take on it is this. I, I felt like they really should be concerned. And it's not so much from the apparent, from what we saw last night, it's really from when you judge a quarterback, you judge a quarterback in the times of challenge and the times of adversity. In his six career primetime starts, mm. he only has been averaging 167 yards per game passing, five touchdowns, nine interceptions, 63 passer rating. Mm. And so we all know when we start the season off, we start the season off with the anticipation of knowing that we have a chance to play for the game at the end of the year. But in order to play for the big game at the end of the year, which is the Super Bowl, you have to play well in primetime games. And when you look at that record, it shows that he doesn't. Mm. And so that's the thing that I'm disappointed in, just seeing it overall, that, like you said, TJ, they could have provided him more help. I thought they should have ran the ball more in between the tackles and became more creative and exotic other than just lining up in a typical eye or just a typical fullback and just running up the gut 
knowing that you're playing against another good defense with the Green Bay Packers. So we got Kirk Cousins out here again, huh? Prime time failures. That's what that sounds. Pretty like. much, that's I, what it is. I don't. Mm. I wouldn't go as far as him being as good as good Kirk as Cousins. Cousins, right? I, I agree with TJ and Takeo in terms of I put the blame on the coaching staff. Be, be, th there was a critical third and five deep inside Green Bay territory, and they got a delay a game penalty and made it third and ten. Mm -hmm. My mind was blown. Ooh. How does that happen? At the end of the game on that final drive, I thought with a relatively young quarterback who was struggling, I thought there was an opportunity in those final two or three minutes to take a timeout, bring the dude to the sidelines, before, because they ran a bunch of plays right before the two-minute warning. And they went down the field. Yes, they went. To, <laughs> but but the interception I think came right before the two-minute yes. warning. And to me, and I know the clock was already stopped, but I felt like based on the previous two plays, that dude needed to be brought over to the sidelines, talked to, and have a conversation about what play they were going to run, because he wasn't in the proper rhythm. He did what what Steve Young and them talked about. He stared down a dude in double coverage and threw one of the worst balls I, I think you could throw. He didn't even look at anybody else. No, he really did. He and, wasn't and prepared. Well, he wasn't prepared, as to my earlier point. This is a second-year player in this system, so he is really a second-year player in this league, in this context. And why do people usually in their second year have sophomore slumps? It's because you don't return to square one. You assume that you already get it. You were 11 and 3 as a starter last year. You are already in the system. Just put him out there. No preseason snaps. He's good. And then he went out there and phew, 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 things were flying by him. So you could talk about play calling when you should have called a timeout. You should run the ball, coach. At the same time, this formula worked last year, but you got to give a guy who's still new in this and growing in this opportunities to be in this and be confident. That was a guy to me that didn't have confidence to the point he forgot the most basic fundamental of quarterback. Throw your eyes away from the ball. Look off the safeties. That's because he wasn't comfortable. This is how football works as a quarterback. It's a too high look. You're going left or right. One high. He knew he was going to that corner route, and for some odd reason, he just stared it down. I think the safety was like, there's no way. There's no way he's throwing it over there. He's staring here the whole <laughs> from the look. He drops back. He sees one high. He knows he's going to the corner route. He just stared it down. That's things he will learn from. But because TJ. in practice, he did that, and that safety didn't get over there. What? And so he was, okay, I can get away. But did you hear the safety at the end of the game? Yeah. That was their third time running that play. The first two times, I didn't get there. They lined up in that formation again. I was sprinting to the corner route. He said that after the game. And so that could be play calling. But running the ball, is that going to change him and forgetting his fundamentals? Yes. Or is that repetition? But this is what it's I say. This is where I blame Nagy. When you look at the breakdown, going all the way back from the first of last year when he played, 30 pass attempts or less. His record is 8 and 0, 16 to 4 touchdown to interception mm. ratio. If he passes the football <laughs> over 30 times, his record goes to 3 and 5. 9 to 9, to yeah. nine from a touchdown to interception ratio and 11 takeaways. So for me, I just think as a coach, and I had the opportunity to, to cover um, Trubisky in college. Yeah. And under his system with Larry Fedor. And so, for me, when I see him, and I, I saw some of the good things, the reason why he got drafted, I can't justify being drafted number two, giving up draft picks. But overall, when I see it, you have to step in and give him some type of help and give Manage. him some type of relief because Manager. if you continue to throw the football more, it's putting more pressure on him to feel like, I have to make a play. Too much. LeVar Arrington and Tequil Spikes are back with us. Time now for Darnell's Question of the day. Darnell, take it away. Darnell, yes, sir. Uh, so last night's game was a little rough on the eyes. Man. You're on social media. Most of the blame went to the NFL team choosing not to play their stars in the preseason. In fact, Aaron Rodgers never touched the field until that game last night, and both teams looked really sloppy. Even my guy, coach legend Tony Dungy, had this to say on Twitter, saying, quote, the first quarter looks like these coaches might want to play their stars a little more in the preseason. Defenses are usually ahead of offense at the beginning of the year, but miss blocking assignments, off-target throws, and sloppy play for both offenses. So I want to ask you guys, 
Do you blame inactivity in the preseason for last night's sloppy mm -hmm. play? You do, huh? <laughs> well, I'm asking y'all. Oh, okay. Y'all the ones that don't want to play in the preseason. I hated the preseason because I didn't do it in college. And damn it, I'm a pro now. Why am I doing it here? Um, I, will, I will say I'm torn on this one, though, because what we saw last night was a glorified preseason game. Um, and I don't think that playing in the preseason or not playing in the preseason is a one-size-fits-all philosophy. It depends on circumstance. Are you new in a system? Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, maybe you want to get out there, even though you're a vet. I get it, Brick Dog, and you're the best. However, and you got a young player who's in a complex system who hasn't figured it out fully. Hey, Trubisky, get up out of there a couple times. At least throw one pass in the preseason. All that said, y'all remember last year, opening day, L.A. Rams, who leads the charge of we ain't playing nobody in the preseason. First half of that game, they down to the Raiders 13-10. Everybody like, see, that's what we talk about. You got to play your stars. You know what happened at the end of the game? 23 straight points, won 33-10. Y'all, 33-13, uh, y'all shut up. So I'm on both sides. The Rams proved that you can do it this way, and some teams like last night showed you can't. This is the reason why it, it comes off as being sloppy. You get so accustomed to practicing, practicing against each other against this DB, against certain DBs in practice. Mm. And the level, the bar is only here because you, you just can't turn it up because you're not competing against anybody else. Yeah. And so once you become accustomed and you get used to doing certain things over, over, and over again, it becomes routine. And then when you get into another situation like last night, then it turns into, oh, okay, well, this out route is usually open mm. in practice mm. against this top DB, but now it's closing down. And so that's the difference. And I'll tell you straight up, Whit, I hated playing in the preseason. Hated it. I'm not trying to get hurt in preseason and miss some games. But this is a result of it. And, I, and listen, we only going to see this maybe two more weeks. Maybe two at the most. That's a long time. <laughs> but it's a long season. Oh, I'll say this. Yeah. It, it may not necessarily be the preseason that's making for slop, sloppy play. Oh. It's the new rules. It's the new governing of how teams practice. I mean, if you Thank think about you. it, if you, if you really think about it, we hated the preseason for more reasons than the preseason. We hated it because of the practice. Mm. We wanted to break camp. We was always sitting there looking at, <laughs> yes. take the tape off the wall, bro. Get that tape off that wall, right? You put the tape on how many practices we had yes. in, the, in, the, in the preseason. I hated it. The practices, to, to, and to Takeo's point, the practices now are based upon that because the practices aren't as competitive as they used to be. Mm. You're not hitting each other twice a day. Mm. And then when you go tops and, and, and you, you only have shorts on, it's still a full mm. contact mm. practice. The fact of the matter is, is that you're That's looking it. at a, an NFL that – I hate to say it because when you're an old head and you said it, it's like you didn't do it, yeah, you did it in my day, and that. Yeah, yeah. But they're softer than us, and it takes a little bit longer to harden up and be prepared for what it is you're going to deal with when you don't practice the mm -hmm. way that they used to practice. Mm -hmm. Again, for mm -hmm. offensive linemen, mm -hmm. that's who struggled the most out here. Yeah. Both teams gave up five sacks. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Both teams never really established a running game. Mm. You can't prepare for Levar and Takeo by playing patty cake in a bunch of practice. You, you can't for Marcellus, though. I mean, <laughs> Marcellus, top 50, top 50, top 50, top 50, top 50, top 50, Take the dag out your back. the most money ever in Chosen. Can I get some love? The point is, getting up to that second level as an offensive line. Yeah, OK, clean it up. Getting up to that. That's where. No, you nailed it. First of all, producers, rewind and take off my first entire speech, because what you said is it. You can't callous going softball and practice mm -hmm. like the conditions are right now. And it's crazy if you guys have ever driven a sports car. This is a crazy analogy. When you drive a sports car, you go zero to 60. Vroom, you know what the first thing that happens? That thing starts smoking and stinking. They're like, oh, you got to roll it for a minute before you get all that out. Then all of a sudden, vroom, out of there. Out of there. All good. That's what we saw last night. A lot of yeah. smoke. <laughs> they were hitting the gas. It wasn't going the same. Joined once again by T.J. Husmanzada and LeVar Arrington. Let's return to the NFL. Huge game on Sunday night when the Steelers faced the Patriots at Foxborough. Tom Brady has never lost to the Steelers at home, going 5-0 against them, including the playoffs. Ben Roethlisberger is feeling some added pressure after his leadership was called into question this past season, coupled with the departures of both Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. I think the Steelers have a great emotional edge that's going to lead to a 
shellacking of the Patriots whoa, whoa, whoa. Sunday night. I really do. I think Mike mm. Tomlin, Big Ben, backed up against the wall. The, 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 the march to the Super Bowl starts Sunday night with a 14-point victory over the Patriots. <laughs> Man, you just married those two points. I was with you in the beginning. They are going to be extremely motivated. A lot more on their plate to eat in terms of motivation. Uh, and it's weird that they're in a motivated mode no matter what happens. Think about it. A.B. does what A.B. is doing right now, getting in trouble. Oh, man, we got to ball out to show that he really was the issue. But let A.B. play Monday and ball out himself. Guess what they're going to think all through the year, too? We got to really ball out to show that we are different than what we have lost in A.B. So they're fully motivated. And this team under Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season. But let's not act like they're just going to go out there and spank on the Patriots. I'm not going that far. But in terms of motivation, emotional edge, whatever it may be, there are a few people I, that come to mind. Mike Tomlin, Ben Roethlisberger, Juju Smith-Schuster. I don't know how many of the other guys, the meat of the team, is sitting there really with pom-poms talking about, I'm caught up in this A-B saga. Because a lot of guys may be sitting back saying, that's on y'all, but I'm going to do me. Hold on, TJ, before you go, Marcellus, I do want you to understand, because you, you have no experience with this. The, it's ring night for the Patriots. Oh! And, and, and so, you know. <laughs> Little quick shot. Little quick <laughs> shot. Yeah, I'm, hey, I'm amongst ah. brethren. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got yeah, a ring we all together. together. We all together. Yes, we all together. Got that money, though. Got that money. I think that's another thing that works in the uh, Pittsburgh state. Ah, that's a good go point. Ahead. Number one, <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll have an emotional edge somewhat just because it's almost like a new head coach. It's a new team. They're excited. You get rid of your two best players, and then you see how one is acting now. It, it's like... It's our first game with a new team, even though it's the same coach, same team, so to speak. But <laughs> you playing in New England. Man. Just as they get in the ring, like, mm. if this wasn't New England, you would say, oh, they might get complacent. Complacency, they're never satisfied, man. They always hungry. And so they're going to get this ring, and they're going to commence to say, now we got to go kill Pittsburgh. <laughs> That's just how New England is. <laughs> the last five years. You've never all... seen a band of Rays either, TJ. You it don't, don't matter. Ah, we They're not going to get it. complacent. <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've it. Seen I just it. participated. Just <laughs> right, right. I mean, I, a reality check is, is it an emotional edge for them personally? Sure, it's an emotional edge for them. It's not an emotional edge for this game. Mm. The Patriots are a machine. That's what that's what they, they start are. slow. That, and they True. could that start slow. They, they, they could start slow and it won't matter. But, but the emotional edge? No, I don't. The An say, advantage. The, they have, in my view, yes, they will have emotional edge. I don't keep saying that. I don't, I don't look at it as being an advantage. I don't look at it as being an emotional edge. I think they can get too emotional, and that's bad for them. I think their emotional edge is based around what you guys are saying is all of the confusion that they've they've parted ways with, and now they can just play football. And I think that the people oh, who so are agree most. With me. <laughs> I agree with that, but it's not an edge over. It's not an edge that's directly impactful for the game. Or it's an edge for them to say, you know what, we can go play football. If anything, it's probably more pressure. It's probably going to turn out to Somebody be more pressure. Somebody tell me the line on this game. Continue. Somebody right, tell it's, it's me the line. No, I got something for you. Forget yeah. the line. No, no, I'm not, I'm who, the coach Baton, of, who the coach of the Patriots? Belichick. Yep. What is he in week one, nine and two? Uh, forget that. We just get on the field. Let's talk about something you ain't got no experience about NFL fields. Oh, field. wow. <laughs> Byron back. Nine and three. Wow. Tom Brady is 11 and three all time versus the Steelers and five and oh, oh, at home against this team. You talking about they're going to get spanked? Well, oh, that's how? an emotional edge. It could be the first time. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm Six sorry. could be the Emotions one. Emotions is going to win the game. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go over. I'm going to give you seven points. I'm going to give you seven and a half. I'll give you eight. All right. The Steelers cover all that. They win by double digits. Oh, wow. All three. Oh, oh, my I'm God. Three, Casa Dragones. Well, what, hey, what, what are we? Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk off it. Casa Dragones. We're going to talk off it. Gentlemen's bet. I'm yeah. telling y'all. No right, way. The Steelers are going to run roughshod over. Mm. And people will overreact. No way. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God. The New England oh, dynasty's yeah. over. No. I'm not going to do that. Hold even on. though I would be prone to. Bottle or case? Because I don't want to play. Bottle. Bottle. Oh, that's three bottles. Bottles. It's three, three. It's bottles. six in a case, though. I, I don't get a man. case. I'm a case. <laughs> no way. Take a bottle. Here. Get a bottle. All right. Here. Before we go, I want to celebrate the life of Larry Willen, one of my old high school football coaches. Mm. Coach Willen died this week at the age of 84 
after teaching and coaching at Indianapolis Warren Central High School for more than 50 years. Three years ago, Peter King, the founder of Sports Illustrated's Monday morning quarterback blog, asked me to write a piece defending the role of football in our society. I wrote about Larry Willen. Coach Willen epitomizes football's positive influence on our country. I was the co-captain of Warren Central's 1984 undefeated and nationally ranked state championship team. Larry Willen was our defensive coordinator. Our co-captain was a defensive end named Chris Hurt. Chris lived in a housing project, a 20 minute ride from our high school. He spent the first 14 years of his life preparing for a career as a street hustler. Mm. He pivoted when he got the chance to enroll at Warren Central. Larry Willen, a husband, a father, and a $25,000 a year accounting teacher and assistant football coach took on the responsibility of mentoring and assisting Chris as he transitioned to a legitimate student. Chris was not a major college football prospect. He was a 5 foot 10, 180 pound pass rusher. He was a rough kid who wanted to make something of himself. Coach Willen tutored Chris academically, counseled him on life, and bought him McDonald's on their post-practice drives to Chris's housing project. This is what high school coaches do in all sports. They're true heroes. Coaches never have time to kneel and protest because they spend all day and night on their feet taking real action to help young people. Football coaches live lives in service to some of our most needy young people. I'm very defensive about the sport and the coaches that work within it because I've seen the game's positive impact throughout my entire life. The game is hard and full of risk, but so is life. The challenges we present our children must be hard or we're setting them up for failure. Chris Hurt would have never graduated high school without football and Coach Willen. Tonight, my high school is honoring the 35 year anniversary of the state championship team Chris Hurt and I led and the school is celebrating Coach Willen's 50 plus years of service to the game and young people. The school is a football powerhouse now. We've won eight more titles since 1984. We routinely produce Division I football players and NFL prospects. More important, through our football program, we steer tough kids from tough situations in the right direction. Coach Willen taught us to do that. More Speak for Yourself after this. LeVar Arrington and Tequil Spikes are back. Let's go to Dallas, where Ezekiel Elliott's holdout drama came to an end this week. And now the focus shifts to Dak Prescott. The Cowboys say there's still a chance they could sign Dak to a new deal before their game on Sunday. Head coach Jason Garrett is focused on beating the Giants, but his contract issues has contract issues of his own mm. as he enters the final season of his deal. All right, the question here is, is there more pressure on Dak or Jason Garrett this weekend? Oh, it's Dak. Not even close. Um, you got to remember who Jason Garrett is. This is a guy who's been an eight and eight coach and a lame duck coach for the Dallas Cowboys before and survived all that. As a matter of fact, got under contracts and thrived under that. But Dak Prescott is playing for his compensation life. And in that respect, you got to keep adding positive things to the resume. And <clears throat> things may start off slow for this Cowboys team. You got your tight end, your security blanket coming from Monday Night Football. You got your running back coming from Cabo. And you got your star receiver who didn't even play this entire preseason. Okay. I mean, it's all on deck. It's a great opportunity for him to show that value. But in, in respects of Jason Garrett, He's on a different grading system than what Dak is going to be under. Uh, I say Dak as well, too, and this is the reason why I had to go dig through my notes and find out some good stuff. Work, now. brother. <laughs> no quarterback from any round of the draft since 2011 has gotten a contract extension from, a, from that team that drafted them after finishing their rookie deals. Two quarterbacks now that are, prop, that are going to finish out their deals, Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston. Mm. So when we look at that body or just that paragraph as facts, all the pressure is on him, and I truly feel like it's, it's lightweight, disrespectful for him to be able to – you look at some of the things that he's done over the – during his contract years, the second most wins in the NFL during his three years as a starter. So when you look at that, why would you send your star quarterback, knowing what you have not had in previous years, you won't send him into this final year without a deal? So hopefully – I, I hope he gets his money because I think he deserves it. Yeah. But the timing is definitely off, and it puts more pressure on the quarterback. Nine-year career as a head coach. Nine years. Yeah. Three playoff appearances and has not gone anywhere in the playoffs. No Lost pressure. in divisional rounds. 
Weekend. We're talking weekend. We're not <coughs> talking entire season. We're talking weekend. The pressure is 100% on Jason Garrett. It's way more on Jason Garrett. You know why? Because Dak, Dak has to worry about who? Dak. Dak. <laughs> right? So the reality here is Dak is worrying about everything we talked about. Contract, 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 contract. Respect him. Pay him. Contract, contract. Well, Jason Garrett has to worry about Dak, Ezekiel. How is he going to play? What's going on with, with the plantar fasciitis going mm. on with, with Amari, yeah. right? Yeah. Are, are, are any, are, is Sean Lee going to finally stay healthy through four quarters of a game? Mm. What, what are my guys going to do? How are they going to perform? Coordinator. Come on. You got so many different issues and so many different elements that you have to try to pull together managing this team that coming into <clears> this <throat> game, you never know how a team is truly going to play until that ball is kicked off and you start to see how they react to the competition of what's going on on that field. The pressure is on him as a coach to lead this team to be a good team because this guy that opened up his pocketbook. What did he say? My pockets are a little bit lighter. Isn't that what he said? <laughs> yeah. It's lighter. So when your pocket is lighter, you better put some money back in my pocket. And that comes down to who's <laughs> coaching, not who's the quarterback, at least not this weekend. Yeah. If they lose to the Giants, the conversation is going to immediately switch to not are they going to replace Dak. Not, and it probably won't even go not even what, what we're going to pay Dak. It's going to go to is Jason Garrett the right coach for this team? <laughs> and, Jason, and, and Jerry Jones is all in based on his actions of paying all these guys and trying to pay Dak. He thinks this is a Super Bowl team. They come out of the gate against the Giants yeah. with Eli Manning's dusty ass out there. <laughs> dusty and, and disgusted. And, and don't do anything. Right. I just think the mm. pressure heats up on Jason Garrett, mm. and he can be replaced this season. Okay. They got to ride Dak out. So mm. the wheels fall out this year. Look, that song, Jason Garrett's not the coach for the Cowboys, has been played so many times, no one's running to the dance floor for that one. We've heard that <laughs> too many damn times. Let's remember, they're grading on a curve. And Jason's, Jason Garrett's curve is different than Dak's. Remember this. One, they did beat the Seahawks last year, so they did okay. advance in the playoffs, whatever. In All his right. nine Three seasons. Times. Yeah, in his nine seasons, he's had five non-winning seasons. If they were already going to pull the trigger on him, they would have been done it. They're grading him on a different curve. Listen to this. Dak Prescott, second most wins at the position. Mm, not so sure about you. Second most wins versus Jason Garrett with his five non-winning campaigns. Uh, we like Jason. We're really into Jason. And he's been a lame duck before, so I don't see how he's under any different pressure. But Dak... They were just talking about that. Hey, we could play this all the way through. We still got our franchise tag. We'll see if the open market is favorable. I still I side with Wit on this one. When okay. you when you pay out that type of, of scratch to to the players, the the stakes most certainly go up. They they go up and they are as high as they're going to be with the amount of money making the running back the highest paid guy. In but the he league. hasn't got his cheese yet. So I'm talking about right. Now. Neither one has gotten their due. But but. With that being said, that talent is on your team and it's participating this yeah. weekend. Well, you and, better and, be the circus master. But, yeah. but check this out, and we all know this, and I think sometimes we have a tendency to forget the most pressure that's on anybody on a football team is usually the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Just because they control so much. A lot of guys, receivers, offensive linemen, running backs, their success is predicated off of the quarterback being able to deliver the football to them. That's, that right there is enough alone. I've talked to several quarterbacks, even on my teams, going into their contract year or seeing other quarterbacks get paid, mm. and they come out and say, man, you know what? I just signed a new deal. If I can play well this year, I know I can go back to the table and push this team to get more money. So my point is, I'm saying is this, the reason why I do believe and feel that more pressure is on Dak is because it's implied pressure. He already understands I have to be on point like the end of last year mm. to get this success going for my football team to win, knowing we may not get what we need to get out of Zeke maybe for the four to six weeks yeah. just because he hasn't been there. Takeo, you're new to the show. I like to make silly relationship analogies. Prepare for another. <laughs> he does. Uh, Here we go. Listen, <laughs> you got to remember, Dak Prescott, is sitting there like a girl whose phone is blowing up. There's all kinds oh, of Oh, I can't stand texting it. Texting her. I'm right here. Do, what we doing tonight? What we doing tonight? What we doing tonight? 
Ain't no... Jerry Jones is trying to give Dak $30 million. And Dak, <laughs> Dak's like, I'm good, I'm good. Jason Garrett, nobody's texting him. He keeps staring at his phone. <laughs> Jay, text me. <laughs> he, got, he got no contract. Oh, no. He done told I, you I, playing out this year. I thought you told me that Dak, with his profoundly average self, pro football focus, yeah. ain't nobody texting him in the free agency market either. No, no, but Jerry. They're going to take him out, but ain't nobody blowing him up right now. Bird in the head. Jerry, mm -hmm. you sitting on Jerry Jones trying to give you $30 million, and Jason Garrett has no contract beyond this year. Yeah. They let him play it. How can there be more pressure? One guy, they're trying to pay $30 million. The other guy, they're like, man, I don't know. But that's <laughs> Jason Garrett's been here before. Girl, guess what? He coming anyway. He ain't even got to call this. He always come through. <laughs> Boo Boo always is coming through. So that's what's going to happen. Jason Garrett being here. Right. Uncle Jimmy's here. We're going to give you our approval rating for Antonio Brown. Yeah, in girl. Inmate. You know. <laughs> uh, Uncle Jimmy, uh, uh, Marcella said some really incredible things today. What's new? I know that uh, Big Dummy today was very easy. Hey, man, to be quite honest with you, as I circumvented through the situation, I realized <laughs> it wasn't real too... It wasn't really hard for me to evaporate the situation as it came up. <laughs> Anybody that sat up here and said, the secret to happiness is to keep your side piece real close <laughs> while you're trying to start a new relationship. That sounds like a lonely-ass person to me, Marcellus. Super single. 52, wow. super no single. No wonder you're good at this. <laughs> All right, let's move to Antonio yeah, right. Brown. True. John Gruden says he'll play on Monday despite his confrontation with general manager Mike Mayock. A.B. apologized to his team and just posted this on Instagram. It's a Nipsey Hussle lyric, quote, mm. You can hold me down through these troubled times or be another victim to my stubborn pride. Hashtag stuck in the grind. All right, Marcellus, do you think uh, A.B.'s apology was sincere? No, I don't. Um, I don't want to steal LeVar's thunder because he's not here, but uh, we agree on... This was the forced apology from the authority figure in the situation that tells you if you don't apologize, you know the consequences. So I'm a father of three. Uh, all right. And then they go out there and they play the song, but no emotion behind it. Um, hate to question the man's heart, but at the same time, this seemed forced. Didn't see a lot of contrition. Didn't see a transparency to what his pain is. I don't like the Instagram post. No. That contradicts the apology to me. It sounds very arrogant. Yeah. Uncle Jimmy, uh, your pants are riding quite high today. Mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> do you think the apology was sincere? Well, first of all, I need you to understand my whole purpose in being here. First of all, I'm here solely as the purpose of being the spiritual detention advisor <laughs> to Mr. <laughs> Anthony A.B. Brown, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> right. allegedly. First of all, let me just say, and I'd like the record to stimulate itself to realize that there's been some <laughs> mis miscalculations just based <laughs> off of Mr. Antonio Brown. And yeah. I've been sent here to circumcise this situation before oh. it gets any further. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you must understand the derivative of the phrase oh. A.B. It was given to him at birth, which means he's an all right brother. He's an all right brother. An all right brother. At uh, birth. At birth. <laughs> at birth. At birth. Uh, at birth. See, see, first of all, I understand what's happening right here. What? Because I understand that you, Mr. Whitlock, if it's not blonde or smothered in barbecue sauce, you have the tendency to not take it seriously. <laughs> but right about now, I'm trying to say my brother A.B. right now is having problems. Fact. The brother's been sentenced to time, and he's got to figure out how to deal with it. Mm. Mm. The boy's doing time in his mind. You understand? Just because you can't see the bars don't mean that that brother's free. You understand what I'm saying? I think so, but... What do... Do you have a point here? Was yeah. he sincere? Yeah. Did you have anything to do with his apology? What? Come on, John Carl. <laughs> Listen to me. I, I, I got a statement. And if A.B. would have listened to me, I could have I given it to him real simple. Okay, I wrote a little rhyme about this, and if y'all want to hear it, I'm going to give it to you. Here you go. <laughs> we got a choice. We got a choice. You pulled me to your team just to make me a fool. <laughs> you pulled me to your team. I dye my mustache blue. <laughs> <laughs> I almost froze my feet off, too. But I did it just out of utter defiance of you. <laughs> Mike Maybach. Maybach. Yeah, that's the kind of car I got. <laughs> Kill my GM. <laughs> Woo, hot damn, my feet is getting hot. <laughs> I catch many touchdowns 
and our smile's really bright. <laughs> but then I break into your house and snaps your necks at night. <laughs> Kill my GM. Helmet this, helmet that. <laughs> cracker ass cracker can't tell me how to act. <laughs> Kill my GM. He pulled a nice trick. Kill my GM. You didn't tell me you signed Vontez Perfect. C I L L, my GM. How you feel now? C I L L, my GM. I kill him with a smile. <laughs> All praises be to Brother Eddie Murphy. <laughs> what do we do? Kill my landlord in the middle of the night. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> Wow. Oh, that was so <laughs> funny. C I L L. Oh my God. Man, you are. All right. Let me Whoa, get to my 16? Yes. A B is man. down to a 16. I've dropped his more in character. Hell, get a I've dropped his authenticity after that bogus apology. What? Uh, a B's down to a record low 16. He's worse than a dumpster fire. That is insane. The dude is back on the team. Save this 30 million, you can't have him that low. You dropped him too. I did drop him, but he did save himself in front of So <laughs> I got him at a 47. The authenticity, the flip flop, the insincerity, and the apology, not good for me, but dumpster fire. All right. So I call Johnny Cocker. <laughs> Twitter agrees with me. They have him at a 79. Yeah. And, and a black man, your security does social media. Fire.